All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. And we've already talked about behavior, you know, how it's going to look when we start or how we end the graph. But now we're going to touch on multiplicity, okay? And together, these two things will help us create a picture, of, you know, overall of what's going on with the graph, not just start and end, but what's going on in the middle. Remember yesterday there was a couple of pictures where I probably wrote stuff in the middle, right? That's what we're going to talk about, what's going on in there, um, so we can put everything together now. All right, so let's start with multiplicity. The multiplicity of a root or a zero or an x-intercept, okay, is just based off of the exponent. So for instance, if I have x minus 3 to the fourth, okay, what would this x-intercept be, you know, if I set it equal to 0 and solved? Three, yes. And the multiplicity is just the exponent from the factor. So that would be four. Okay, so when we ask multiplicity, that's what we're talking about. X intercepts will have multiplicities, and depending on what these exponents for the factors are, that'll tell you what's going on. If you set this equal to zero, like you know, when you find an, or, uh, an x intercept, you get x equals 3, right, when you add 3 to both sides. So that's where we get this. And the multiplicity is just the exponent of the factor. Okay. So here in example 1, they say we have an x-intercept of 5. Okay. Does it make sense, working backwards, that x minus 5 needs to be a factor? Right? If you think backwards, it has to be x minus 5 in the equation. Otherwise, where does x equals 5 come from? Right. So this one, however, based on what's going on near the x-intercept, what degree does this look like from yesterday? To the second or maybe fourth, anything even, right? I'm just going to put 2, though, but you should know anything even, okay? So any multiplicity that has an even multiplicity, um, that's going to bounce. I think our text uses the word touch, the x-intercept. I like to think of it as it's going to bounce off of the x-intercept just like a parabola does at its vertex, Okay? The book, or Math Excel, likes to say that it touches it. It does, but that can be ambiguous in my opinion. But just make sure that you know that, that that's the same thing. Okay? Um, what does this look like here? X to the third, maybe fifth, anything odd, right? So we call this a wiggle because the graph wiggles its way through the x-intercept. Yes? You weren't here yesterday. You're going to have to... Yeah. It could be to the third or to the fifth or to the seventh, right? So we do say it crosses but with a wiggle, because over here, it's not wiggling at all. It's just going pretty much straight through the x-intercept. Does that make sense? So this would just be x minus 5 to the first, okay? Lines are to the first power, so anything that's straight at the x-intercept is going to be to the first power as well. Okay. Yes? So all that matters is where it touches the intercept, so it's going to go like straight, straight down here? Right. So we're th that's a great... Great question. We're thinking locally. So if you zoom in, right? If you zoom in right there, what does that look like? 
line. Like a line. Here, though, you can see that it still looks like a cubic. Does that make sense if you get close to it? Okay. No. In fact, I mean, you should just know that you could write it as x minus 5. Yes, that's the same thing. All right, so with this kind of background now and the behavior that we talked about yesterday, you should be able to now draw some pictures for these examples down here. But you got to find all these little details out first. Okay, so first, um, the degree, that's from the highest exponent when everything's multiplied out, right? We don't have everything multiplied out here. But if you do multiply it out, x minus 2 to the second, if you FOIL it out and do everything, what's the very first term? Very good. And even if you don't know the rest, it's OK. But you know that there's more terms, right? But all I care about is the leading term. Okay. What happens if I multiply or FOIL out the uh, x plus 7 to the third? What's the leading term? x to the third plus a bunch of other stuff. In a couple of sections, we will actually be concerned with what the whole equation is going to be. So we'll actually multiply those out and figure them out. Right now, though, all we care about is that if I multiply these two together, we get x to the fifth. That is our leading term. Therefore, the degree is 5. Make sense? OK. Now, looking at your factors, what are the x-intercepts? 2, 2, 0, right? And what's the other one? Negative 7, 0. And now each of these has a different multiplicity. What's the multiplicity for the first one? Okay. And the second one? Very good. And based on the fact that we have an even multiplicity, it's going to touch or bounce... off of that value. But if it's to the third, that one will cross, and specifically not just cross, but wiggle its way through. Okay? And they don't have this here, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's find the y-intercept. Because we are going to be asked to do it anyway. And then Instead of just putting it on all your tests, I'd rather we actually do it, right? How do I find a y-intercept? Plug in 0 for x. Good. So if I do that, plug in 0 in here. 0 minus 2 squared is going to be 4. Yep. 0 plus 7 cubed. 7 cubed is 343. If you have a calculator, help me out, because I don't know what it's going to... 4 times 373. What is that? Should be 13 something. 1372, maybe? Oh, 343. Thank you. Thirteen seventy-two. Okay. Three forty-seven. Three forty-seven. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys! What is? Is seven cubed three forty-three or not? It is. Okay. All right. Let's put everything together. <laughs> so, label your x-axis with the intercepts. You don't have to do tick marks. You can just estimate about where they would be. And obviously this one is going to be way up, so just put it as high as you can and label it, 1372. Okay, and before we draw this, I'm going to think the, of the global picture first. This is going to look like the leading term, which we figured out before. The leading term was what? 
x to the fifth. Yesterday we talked about those graphs. Where do those graphs start? What does x to the fifth look like? Yes. So we're going to start at the bottom. It's going to come up. And again, now we're going to have some information to figure out what it's doing in the middle. But eventually it's going to come back up, right? So using the uh, end behavior and using these multiplicities, we'll be able to get a really good picture of what this graph looks like. Okay? So for the graph, we're going to start pretty much right underneath this negative 7. And obviously we're going to go up. And as I get close to it, now I look at this multiplicity. We said that we're, we're going to wiggle our way through that x-axis, or the x-intercept, right? So as we get close to it, we're going to do something like that to make it look like it's a cubic. Okay? Does that make sense? The next point on the graph that I have to hit is the y-intercept. I can't get to there until I go through there first, right? So you're just going to do a smooth curve that goes up and then comes back down through that point. And now as we get close to 2, look at its multiplicity. What was it? It was even, so it's going to bounce. So as we get near it, we're just going to make what looks like a parabola. Any questions on how we did that? Okay, let's try the next one. What is the degree there? Think I got to multiply it all out first. X to the fifth, so the degree is five. It's it's the same leading term as before, right? You got x, x cubed, and x. Multiply it all out. It's x to the five. Obviously, there's a bunch more to it, but we just care about the beginning only. Okay. What are the x-intercepts? That's one of them. That's two out of the three of them. Zero, zero is the other one. Yeah, don't forget, if there's a single x, right, that's going to be zero, zero. And what's the multiplicity for zero? One. To the first power, right. So one. Multiplicity for negative 1 to the third. And then this one's the 1, yep. <clears throat> Anything to the first power? Crosses. No wiggling, right? Just goes straight through. To the third? Crosses with a wiggle, yes. And again, let's find the y-intercept. Maybe you already know it. It's already written down. It has to be 0, 0. If 0, 0 is an x-intercept, that's automatically our y-intercept. And if you don't believe that, plug 0 into x over here. 0 times everything else will be 0. Okay, so those are the main points. Global pick, same. Right? Same picture that we that we had for the first problem. Slightly different stuff in the middle, though. <clears throat> so let's see what this looks like. So 0, 0 is a point. Negative 1 and 2. So again... Find your leftmost x-intercept, and just pretty much right below it, you're going to start your graph. And now as you get close to it, look at the multiplicity. Cross, but wiggle, wiggle your way through it. So it's going to look something like that. Now we've got to come back and hit this point, right? And it's just a multiplicity of... One, so we're going to come back around and pretty much just go straight through. And to get to two, 
we're going to have to come back around. And that's also a one multiplicity. So it just goes right through it. Yes, because it's linear. The only ones that are going to wiggle are if it were to the third, to the fifth, or anything else odd that's bigger than one. Okay? You see how this picture and this picture look a little different, but in the grand scheme of things, same concept. Starts low, starts low, ends high, ends high. It's just the stuff in the middle that changes from graph to graph. Okay? Why don't you guys try this one on your own? But I'm going to change it. That's too easy. We're going to do y equals negative 2 x plus 1 uh, squared and x minus 3 squared. Just two. What's that? Sure it is. It's the same process. Yes, that's why it's in the same table. <laughs> we're trying to avoid just putting it in the calculator to see what's going on. Because this is stuff that we're learning without using the graphing feature. But you can certainly like type it in, you know, and see check your answer. Uh, I think somebody answered that. Does this give us zero as an intercept? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Why, why not? There's no X there, right? Yeah, you're dumb. There has to be. Guys, come on now. I'm kidding. It's just because it was random. Walk out of the play. I just want to check. Go to my council and apologize. <laughs> Think of the leading term. If you were to multiply everything out, right, what's the leading term? That'll help you. It's very important, you guys, that you're not just waiting for me to do this. Try it, even if it's wrong. It's great information if you have something that you did incorrectly, and then you have it either next to it or you make some corrections on it so you can see what you were thinking and what you should have been doing. Because that'll help you get better. Right, I'm going to slowly start going through it. Oh, okay, okay. Why is it 4? Because x squared and x squared, when you multiply them out, will be x to the 4, right? By the way, let's just write this down. So I know it'll be x to the 4, but there's a negative 2 in front of there, right? So the global picture will be like negative 2x to the 4th. Anything that's even looks like, so it's either opening up or opening down. Which one is it? Opens downward. So our global picture, we start down, 
we're going to do some stuff in the middle, and then we're going to come back around, right? Yeah, well, that's what we're doing right now. That's what this is. <laughs> All right, so this x-intercept, first x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Second one, 3, 0. 2 and 2 for both multiplicities. So they're both going to touch or bounce. Uh, oh, yeah, y intercept. If you plug in 0, negative 2, this will be 1, right? And then 9? Negative 18. Okay, so here we go. Negative 18 is the y-intercept. Negative 1 is one of the uh, x-intercepts. And then we got 3. And we know, we know that we start down. So we're going to start here. And what are we doing at both of these intercepts? We're just going to bounce right off of it. So you're going to do something like this. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does look like an end. Yep. All right, any questions? Okay, next page. All right, so all of this stuff that we've been talking about is kind of summarized here in this table. What the graphs look like, the end behavior, x-intercepts, we've been doing that. Same with the y-intercept. Behavior around the x-intercepts, we're going to work on that in this next example. Turning points. This is something we have not talked about yet, but we need to know. So depending on the degree of the polynomial, that will tell us the most or the maximum amount of turning points. You know, your high and lows, okay? If the degree is n, then there's always at most one less than degree. So for example, if we have a degree, let's say uh, 6, that would have at most how many turning points? At most five, yes. Okay? So just remember, whatever the degree is, the highest number of turning points possible is just going to be one less. Okay? It's not always going to be one less. In fact, the ones that we did were not, but it's possible. Okay? We've talked about increasing, decreasing, domain and range already, so let's see if we can put everything together. Um, example 6 got cut off, you guys. H is on the next page, but I'm just going to write it, write it down here. So is this like a whole page problem? Yeah. For H, the question is pretty much what power function... resembles the graph. You can flip over if you want. Okay, but we're gonna I'm gonna put it all on the same page. Okay. So let's go through this. Real zeros is the same thing as roots or x intercepts. They all mean the same so even if I ask for roots or zeros, we're still doing what we did in the previous page. What are the two x-intercepts? Negative 4 and 1. Good. The one on the right 
is one zero, obviously, right? What is what is its multiplicity? Three. Very good. The leftmost is going to have a two multiplicity. Yes. The graph at the right, at uh, positive one, it's going to cross through. In fact, I'm going to write it down. Not only will it cross, but it will wiggle its way through, right? Because it's a odd, it's a three instead of a one. At the other x-intercept, it will just touch and bounce off of the x-intercept. Okay, and now this is the part that we're talking about up here where it says behavior around the x-intercepts, right here, E and F. Okay, so let's talk briefly about how we do that. Okay? What is the rightmost x-intercept? Let's write it down. What's the x value for that? Well, there's two of them. Which one's on the right? One is on the right. Okay. And now here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug one in everywhere. Let me write that in the black ink so you can see it better. Plug one in everywhere except its original factor. That's what we're going to do. So if I look at the original equation, we have negative 2, x I'm going to replace with 1, and since 1 came from this factor right here, I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm just going to leave that. I don't know why I wrote, oh, I know why I wrote 5, because it is 5. Sorry. Thank you for catching that. Okay, do you guys see what we did there? We plugged in 1 into the x. We did not plug in 1 into this one, because that's where we got it in the first place. And there's a reason for that. What happens if I plug 1 in here? You get 0. So now the whole thing is 0. And that's not, we know we don't have a 0 graph. We don't have a straight horizontal line. Okay, so if I figure out the other part, though, negative 2, 5 squared is 25, right? We get that near x equals 1, the graph looks like negative 50 x minus 1 cubed. Near? Near x equals 1, the graph looks like negative 50 times x minus 1 cubed. That's what we got when we plugged in the 1. Okay? Let's try it for the other one. At the leftmost x-intercept, what's that x value? Negative 4. Now, I'm not going to write all these details out, but... We're going to plug negative 4 in, but not in the first one, because that's where we got negative 4 to start with, right? So we're going to leave that as x plus 4 squared, but we're going to put in negative 4 in the other one, and let's figure that out. This last part is going to be negative 5 cubed. Negative 5 cubed is negative 125. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 125 is 250. And then we have x plus 4 squared. Okay, sorry for squeezing that in there, but are there any questions? Okay. These last two will be easy. Maximum number of turning points. What's the degree? Two. The degree is five. 
so the maximum number of turning points is four. Very good. And now the very last question. What power function resembles our whole graph here? Where do we get our big picture from? We get it from the leading term. The leading term is negative 2 x to the fifth, exactly. Because x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth, but don't forget there's a negative 2 in front of that. So this is what the graph's going to look like. Okay? That's a good place to stop recording anyway. You guys try this last problem on your own.